pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And that has a new assistant, Stacy, that will be taking care of us. Hello. Roll call, please. All right. Okay, so I will go in alphabetical order. Mr. Jack W. Fault. Present. Mr. Kevin Palm. 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 Present. Mr. Al Wazo. Here. Mr. Craig Steckler. Present. Okay. Um, anybody want to make a motion to approve the minutes or anybody have any changes? Uh, move to approve. Second. All those approved? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Do we have any <coughs> communications? Um, there were no oral or written communications at this time. Okay. Bob, you don't need to sit down. We're ready for you. We want to let you go home early. Okay. You have, I believe you were sent a copy of what's up on the screen. <clears throat> and there, there's been a, a few items added to the last uh, quarter when we had this. It basically, in the middle of the schedule, you'll see uh, it has COs with the change order 67. Loading dock 133, public entrance, canopy, so on and so forth. Those have been implemented into the schedule because we've received the, the loading dock change order, and the other ones are imminent. We're going to receive those uh, very shortly, and we're we're planning the work, and uh, we've implemented it into the schedule. We're working with uh, the contractor and, and their major trade contractors, and we're able to achieve this additional work and still complete and meet our substantial completion date and our final completion date in order to uh, occupy the building both for staff and stock and for uh, patients and there'll be uh, some minor work to be completed on the change orders which will not affect occupancy and that will be completed as you can see in early September. So we've been successful in working with the agency, which is Oshpod, and the city, because the city has some permit jurisdiction for the entrance off of uh, Civic Center Drive, and they also have a, some authority in the parking lot area. So we are able to uh, work with those agencies and achieve uh, all our completions necessary to occupy the building and get our permits, even though there's some minor work that will follow. The, um, the design that was approved and then was um, given to Rudolph and Sled in the bid, we cut out the connecting canopies. The original design we were un unhappy with, the connecting corridors to tie the two buildings together. And uh, Change Order 67 is the, is the ground floor or basement floor connection that's back, back by the loading docks, and that includes additions to our loading docks and a covered and contained uh, walkway um, between the two buildings. Um, the other thing that's still in flux, so, so I should also say that we had um, left an allowance for that in the contract with the uh, general contractor of about $3 million. The costs, we do not have final costs yet from them. We expect them this week. Um, they have told us they're in the neighborhood of 3.7 to 3.9, so a little bit higher than what we have left as an allowance. Um, and the front canopy, we're still in negotiations on that. So that's, those are the things that are 
we've known from the beginning of the job these are going to be added. They were just approved by Oshkod in January. So they've been turned over to them to pricing, and they're just getting back to us in pricing. Okay? That's why it's being worked in the schedule like this. Uh, one thing for uh, just to point out uh, that we have, we still remain intact, total the uh, contractor and the owner's grace days, the full package of 30 days each for total of 60 days, without affecting any of these dates, we still maintain those grace period days. We still have those. So it's not that we use any of those up to achieve these, these days. On the cash flow, which is the first two sheets, we have the cumulative cash flow. The green, which was the budgeted uh, forecast, and the red line is the actual billing invoices that were completed by the contractor. We're, uh, we're trading, get into it more accurate percentages, but we're, we're basically uh, in round numbers about 10% ahead. And that's mainly because of the uh, early achievement and installation of the major equipment. Otherwise, it's almost dead on as far as work completion is uh, uh, recognized. That shows up a little bit better in the monthly uh, uh, bar graph. The, the red being what actually, the spikes is when we actually receive the, uh, the equipment. And as you can see now, the uh, the, uh, the red bars are falling below or bringing things back in line with the green bars. So it's, it's, uh, they're, they're eventually going to catch each other very shortly. So Bob, uh, the note here says the budget does not include allowances or contingency. It, 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 the, uh, it, it's, not, it's not forecasting these numbers. It's a, it's, it's a, the, the money is drawn as needed, so instead of putting it in here and, and distorting one of the bars, it's more of a constant. As we draw it, we put it in both the bars. Master, I follow you, especially on the, the previous chart with the lines, you know, the, the cumulative. So the note says the budget does not include allowances or conditions, please. And so the, the, the budget includes it. When they spread the cash flow, yeah, they did not. They did not include the amount for allowances and contingencies because they don't know if when or when hit. they will hit. Okay. So when we have an item that consumes a bit of that allowance or contingency, they'll they'll bring it into the budget in the month where it happens, as well as into the spend. So okay. it's going to kind of be a flex a flex budget. Kind of situation with okay. only regards to because, those with only the, yeah with only with regards to those items because the, I'm you know trying to predict the timing or or possibility of when those will hit is is uh, is pretty tough. So so yeah so that note a little bit confusing for me you know when when I saw that and I was wondering yeah, what what we could do is which and we've toyed with the idea before but didn't didn't open that back. The amount of money that's in the uh, allowance and contingency could be set as a bar at the very end here, so you know the amount of it. And then as that's drawn down, these bars will accumulate, will, will increase a little bit as it's drawn. Sure. Uh, I was really looking at, again, it was the cumulative chart that was a little bit confusing for me yeah. in, in regards to that, especially since we had just talked about the change orders that have been approved for the canopy and the, and the loading dock. I couldn't figure out how those The change orders are approved, but they're not in the contract yet because we, we, they're approved by Oxford. They're approved Oxford change orders, but they're not approved construction change orders yet. But they're in the budget. They're, yes. So that, that's why this was... They're in the project them. budget. Yeah. yeah. So that's why when I look at... When I saw this number, budget, I looked at the total, it's $225 million, mm -hmm. and I was going... It, it doesn't. It, it it didn't line up with you're, you're the correct. project budget, yeah. so that's why it's a little bit confusing. Yeah. So I don't know how to address that to make sure that it's clear in terms of. We'll we'll, we'll work on that and, yeah. and we'll propose something. Okay. If I can make a comment, sure. the way I look at it is there's three and a half million contingency. We we have let's say we have ten million contingency. 
That isn't on the budget because we have nothing to spend it for. So when we have something like this, three and a half million, once it's approved, it will hit the budget. Am I correct? Once this, yeah. I thought the budget was. The budget has a contingency that isn't allocated. To but we're not changing the budget. Well, what right. we're doing is that's, we're, that's what it looks like. And that, that's what no, I'm we're not. To, we're not. The only thing this budget doesn't have in it is the contingencies and allowances because they haven't been determined. So once the contingency. That's not my understanding. Am I not correct on that? Correct. Yeah, that's correct. So the, the, there is one confusion. Let me talk about this. So yeah. the the budget that we review on the last three or four pages mm-hmm. of this document is the project budget, and that is everything all in, and that does not change. Yeah. What you're seeing here is the construction budget for the contractor only, Got it. and all the rest of that money is not in here. So it's just his contract, and so we have the amount of that contract, and then we have the allowances and contingencies, both his and ours. That that's why it's we, that's why we've tried to hold that out until we use it. Otherwise, it would show potentially too much. Money in there. So, so it might be helpful then to have very clear that this is the construction budget. Okay. Because when I see budget, yes, it's okay. No, no, yeah, I hear you. I, no, you're right. When I see these other numbers, I'm going. Yeah. It doesn't tie out. So yes. Yeah, you're right. It needs to. Thank you. Good point. Yeah. Good question. Is not intended to be, <laughs> but, it is a little, but we we're looking at these numbers all the time. So we just, you know we, we we probably haven't explained it or shown exactly how we're looking. No, thanks for that. And it's funny. It's the first time I noticed that note on the chart. That's why I looked at it. And go, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, we're obviously we're trying to hide it, but. <laughs> Uh, we'll do we'll do a better job on that. Yeah, just call it construction budget. I think that'll clarify. Okay. 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 Thank you. Right. Okay. The uh, in the dashboard, if you will, is on the up on the screen, and uh, you'll you'll note that it looks very similar to what we've seen in the past. Um, if we look at the percent time elapsed being 60% versus the percent earned 70%, that's kind of a, a similar to last month where we were running about 10% uh, difference. As Bob pointed out, though, um, some of that is for equipment, and uh, that equipment really won't get into the um, construction. It won't be installed for the next several months here, so it's, it, that accounts for a little bit of that uh, 10% spread there. But nonetheless, the contractor is pretty much tracking against, uh, in terms of work installed versus their uh, versus lapse time, they're tracking a little bit to the good. Um, the to go back to the, what you were, we were talking about a minute ago about the cash flow, uh, you'll see that the current contract amount uh, is the two two thirty seven. Uh, versus, you know, a 228, 229, I believe, on the 226, whatever it was. So there's about a $10 million amount of con- change orders that haven't been given to the contractor. Therefore, we haven't put them into the cash flow. It'll be very simple to add them to the cash flow and have another line for the construction with change orders. So I think we could do what you're asking for in, in the future reports. That as, those con- as those change orders are, are awarded to the contractor, and they do the work, we can begin tracking against that. Um, in terms of schedule, as Bob said, things are, are moving along very well. The contractor, uh, as I showed down on the lower left, or we're showing about nine days of negative flow, nine days behind schedule. That fluctuates somewhat every month to month. Uh, it, it's an, always based on an estimated percent complete of the various tasks they're updating the schedule on. So it's, it's going kind of, kind to of fluctuate to some degree. Um, we are entering, uh, starting in May, we're entering the major life phase of the work, which is called startup and testing. And that goes on for about nine months before we reach substantial completion when OSHPOD agrees that we are 
substantially completed that point, then we've got about a three-month period when OSHPOD completes all of their review and appro approvals before we reach uh, final completion. So as Bob said, the schedule seems to be tracking along uh, well. We do have uh, those change orders that he mentioned, one being the loading dock and the other being completing all the all the site work around the building um, uh, to, still to go. And some of that is going to be done during the winter months when we will get some rain uh, impact on that. But nonetheless, we, we believe we can finish the, the remaining work outside the building and the work in, in the building within the current contract time. Um, on the change order status, we're, we're, we're reporting uh, requested change order amounts of the 7.9, and it, this, this means basically the, the contractor or the owner has requested to go ahead with that, that amount of change orders, and as, as we get OSHPOT approval of things and as we go, go forward and award the contractor, they would move down into the approved category. At this point, we have a fairly small amount of that being approved, being the 94000 but the rest is in the pipeline and in review. Um, as we discussed last time, there are several unfunded projects that, uh, that we would, would like to go back and ask the board for funding for. Um, and um, they would include the removing the modular ED and completing the plaza out there, and then uh, uh, a little bit of extra paving that was really not in the construction contract. It was outside the construction limits. We'll be wanting to expand that one out to the Bart Way property yeah. line out there. Yeah, Craig, that was your question about did we include the parking back behind the, the building? And included in the project is a roadway right behind the building that goes back to the garage. But where the helipad was, was not included. So we, we have plans for that that actually, um, I believe they've been approved, you know, by the city and by OSHPOD now. But we'd have, we'll have we have to go back and ask for more money to, to do that work uh, because it wasn't included in this scope. So. And it's a relatively small amount of added cost for the paving. One of the reasons we didn't try to proceed earlier with that is we wanted to, we knew those roads that was going to get beaten up in the construction and we needed we needed to figure out towards the end of the job how elevations were to be set and all that kind of thing. It's, as Ed said, it's imminent now because we've got nice pod and, and the city's approval are near getting it and we'll be moving ahead with that work. Um, Quality is, uh, remains good. Most all the inspections are, are getting approved the first time. There have been no lost time accidents on the job, which is a very unusual statistic to have that kind of a safety record. We're now 700 and something days into the, uh, 701 days into the job with no accidents. Um, so everything is proceeding pretty well to, to, to meet their completion dates and, and uh, budgets. So I think it's, I feel compelled to talk a little bit about the change orders because last time we reported out to you, we were at about three and a half million dollars with nothing uh, approved yet. And that amount was the prediction of what it was going to cost for the connecting corridors and canopies on the two levels. Uh, we've gotten, we haven't gotten final costs yet. We anticipate them tomorrow. We've been told uh, that rough order of magnitude was 3.7 to 3.9 for that back canopy, and the front canopy about 400,000. So that, that in and of itself was higher than what we've been holding. And then um, the date of this is for the period ending to February 28th. But we honestly we tried to give you as up-to-date information on the change orders as possible because the last 45 days have been extremely uh, active on the change order front. So the first one was one that we were expecting, and that was for $907,000. And what that was, we just got that about, um, oh, about two or three weeks ago. And what that was was what I guess you could call a true up. When we when we um, um, got this project and bid it originally, the dollars came in at about two hundred and fifty million, and we had a budget originally of two hundred and twenty five million. So we uh, went through a value engineering and cut out about thirteen million dollars. And all those changes then had to be incorporated in the plans. 
as well as the input from constructability reviews, problems that were found, like um, there was uh, a fire rating on the old building that had to be upgraded right at the entryway into the new building. All these things that were found that were not anticipated were all incorporated in the final plans, and that is what the, was was um, submitted to Oshpot after we started going. So we had known that we had this change order coming that was basically all the changes that were made, um, and we got a lot of credit out of that, but it, there was a 907000 of additional costs. That was one of the change orders that have come through. Um, the other one that's come through in the last 45 days is we've gotten notification that the labor cost, we had a similar thing, we had a deferred approval for fire alarm and um, security systems. So all those systems have been approved, the pricing came through, and the labor rates, uh, particularly, well, exclusively from the electrical contractor came in way higher than what was anticipated. So they came in and asked for over a million dollars more in labor for both of those. So two million in total change orders over what um, um, what we had set aside as costs. So they were getting, the, the contractor was carrying allowances for all that work. Um, and so we're in the midst of negotiating those right now. And uh, they are coming down. Uh, but we felt that those should be, we should be letting you know. So those are the three biggies that have hit since we met last time. Um, only the $907,000 has been finished, negotiated, brought to the hospital for signature. The rest are all still being negotiated. So I wanted to make sure you, you know, there was a $4 million change. Those are the main things that have hit since then. And as you can see, the approved line is still only $95,000 because of, on February 28th, this is what was approved. 907000 has been approved in the last two weeks. And uh, we have more coming. So you're saying that the extension from the old building to the new one, the covered walled in hallway, I guess. Yes. Is $3 million? It's three. It's it, What it is, is it, the answer is yes. It's coming in at about 3.7 to 3.9. It includes the loading dock is being extended. So you see an existing loading dock. That is being extended all the way to the new building. And then there's a corridor behind it that is enclosed, air conditioned. You know, it's a part. It's a, it's a continued part of the building. So those the, those are that whole connection is coming in at about between 3.7 and 3.9. Yeah, that that also the 3.7 also includes the work in the old cup. You were referring to the work that we have to do in the old cup with that louvered wall and ventilation and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, that that was part of that. So. so. That's, that's all. It was really two projects. I'm sorry. Yeah, basically, uh, what happened was there. There was the original design did not complete what work had to be done in that old cup. It didn't have the the louver removed and replaced, so you could have the right fire rating, and that required venting out through the roof, not through that vent that was there. So that work was included in the loading dock, which was right next door to it. Is the cost of that that particular project per square foot somewhat online with the rest of the construction that we're doing? Uh, good question. I don't have that on the top of my tongue because I just don't. I can't recall the square footage in there. So uh, I, I believe that if you look, I, I honestly don't know the exact square footage, but. Um, Typically, a loading dock like that is going to be a much lower uh, cost than, than a acute care hospital. Acute care hospitals are twelve hundred dollars a square foot, and loading docks don't cost anywhere near that. I, could, I couldn't tell you exactly the square footage to cost. We can figure it out. We, we yeah. that any place. I would say to you that we were carrying an allowance of three million dollars, so we were anticipating it to be in that neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the initial uh, budget, I think, was three point four or something like that, and now they three point seven. Well, I'd just like to be able to answer the critic that we know is out there that's going to stay so three million dollars in the hallway. It's a lot more complex than that, right? So I did start. There, there were a number of things that were that were fixed in terms of 
we have connections. As you're aware, we have a tunnel that came through from the from the uh, central plant. The connection of that tunnel into the hospital, so that you were taking clean and dirty over different routes, was not addressed. So we had to fix that to be basically compliant with current codes in terms of getting things in and out of the hospital, keeping a sterile or clean environment. Um, and, you know, so there was a number of things that was addressed there. But it's a major expansion of the loading dock, and it's addressed a myriad other issues that were going on in terms of circulation, garbage going out, linen going out, linen coming in. Um, so you had all that. And then you have the corridor as well. So it's, uh, you, you are correct. We think of it as the corridor project, but it's actually a lot more than that. The other thing I should just bring up, and I, I, I mentioned this in passing when we were outside, is that these things that were deferred approvals, uh, things that were designed and then brought in later or after the fact, what we're finding is there has been, over the last two, two and a half years since we started construction, and Rudolph and Slutton have said this to us as well, there's been significant inflation uh, more than double digit, more than 20%, between 20 and 35% inflation in that period of time. So we're feeling that as we get the dollars in now that aren't tied down in contracts, we're feeling that with the stuff that's coming in later. Um, so, I mean, the good, the good news is Rudolph and Slatton said we're really fortunate we bid the job when we did. Uh, that if we were doing it today, it would be a significantly more costly, you know, higher cost job. But we've got these things that are, uh, I don't want to say they're minor because they're significant dollars, but they're, these additions are connections that are costing us a little bit more than what we had anticipated. Still, you know, uh, by and large, we're doing well in terms of our allowances and contingencies that we had to set aside for this. But it is coming in a little higher than we expected. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. You want to take a turn? Sure. Okay, so the last time we met, we had been looking at total expenditures on the job of. Um, about $198.2 million uh, over the period, uh, I guess about three months. Uh, uh, we expended another $25.2 million um, to come to total expenditures to date of 223, just a little under $223.4 million. Um, you know, about $24 million of that expenditure coming from constructions and the, the permits and inspections and then uh, some additional costs for architecture and, and uh, uh, construction management. Nothing going into contingency during that period. Um, of the 223.4 million of expenditures, we have reimbursed through general obligation bonds uh, 217.6 million uh, to date. Uh, and we have un unreimbursed expenses of Almost 5.8 million. Any questions on that? Okay. Uh, looking at our uh, estimated cost at com to completion, um, we'll start with uh, the 223.4 million that we ended with on the last slide. Um, our construction folks are estimating. About another 118 point, a little over 118.2 million left in expenditures. That includes uh, the equipment cost of about 30.6 million. The vast majority of that will not be eligible for reimbursement with general obligation bonds. Uh, essentially, um, somebody explained it very well. It might have been you, Ed, this week. If you were to take that building and turn it upside down and shake it, anything that fell out would not be eligible for reimbursement with uh, GO bonds. So uh, that's most of the uh, the medical equipment, the beds, the chairs, uh, the furnishings and fixtures. Um, so based on that projection, um, it looks like uh, in uh, this, again, probably does not include all the change orders at this point, 
looks like we may dip into the general contingency for the project about 1.1 million, uh, leaving about 4.9 million of contingency available for for other uh, other items. So, any questions on that? So, this is our best estimate at this point, and this is. This is taking into consideration what we know in change orders yeah. now and what we anticipate today yeah. that we're going to cover. So that's, yeah. Um, we have six million in contingencies to start with. Yeah. We have eight million in contingencies that we intend to spend. Right. Some of that is going to the, the allowances that are built into the construction contract. So, okay. Right. So that's, that those are what you're deducting. Yeah, and then in that 1.1 yeah. 1. 1 okay. assumes the complete consumptions of those allowances and now rolling to the general contingency. Okay. Right. This is an example of the voting block. Right. 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 I know we have different pots, and sometimes it's hard for me to keep them all. It, it is. Yeah. It is hard. It, it's it's uh, it's something that we have to track accounting wise because there's basically four or five different pots. You know, there's the contractor in the contract allowances and contingencies in the contract. There's the owners allowances and contingencies, and then there's the project contingency. So that's why. You've seen the change orders, but only in this case, you could see 541,000 yeah. coming up against the project yeah. contingency. So, question. Yeah. So, so the, the contingency that we've been talking about that uh, we referred to as the corridor, which was a, Yes, the change yes. order. The That's the change order. order, yes. That is already built in. That variance is or has already accounted for that in the serious in the serious projection. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll flip real quick to the sources and uses. Um, just as a refresher, we started the job with about two hundred and ninety thousand in uh, available fund general obligation funding built from the remainder of the FS. Uh, funds uh, after the uh, cup was completed and the 2015 uh, issue uh, to round out the Measure ZZ money. Um, and also a little bit of interest earned. So a total of $290 million available for the job. Um, to date, we have had reimbursable expenses of $217.6 million, as I mentioned uh, on the last slide. Uh, leaving um, about 72 million, 72.4 million of general obligation bond funds available to complete the, the project. Uh, we have other funding sources totaling uh, a little over 9.5 million for a total of 81.9 million. Um, if we remove the uh, equipment that we talked about earlier from uh, the estimated cost to complete. We have estimated construction costs of about $87.5 million to complete the job, leaving about $5.6 million to be funded uh, from the hospital's uh, reserves. Uh, very doable number, no issues there. So, are there any questions on this? The only thing would be nice, you're totally using these in your head, the 74, but, but the 90. If, if there was a total there that. Do I put some subtotals in there? Sure. No problem. When you're re referencing our five, I'm yep. trying to find them up there. Okay. <laughs> I'll put some totals in there for you. Yeah. I have one question. Yeah. Are the additional funding sources yeah. going to the foundation pledge funds? Yes. Are is the 4.7 what's pledged, or do we have some cash on hand and waiting for other things? We have some cash on hand, and we are, and these are additional pledges. They're currently doing a. a in the midst of another capital campaign, uh, and they're receiving additional pledges through that, so we may see from hopefully we'll see this number grow. Okay. Do, you, do you have any idea of roughly what we have cash on hand? You know, I don't, and I should know that number. I'll get that to you. I don't have it on the tip of my tongue. I think we're all I mean, we're counting it as revenue. Right, right. right. We're all going to get a mail. 
request. Uh, I feel my pledge card now. I, mean, <laughs> I, I sent a check. I'm, I'm good. It's coming. Okay, my little tool. Yeah. I don't buy cheaper pens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, if memory serves correctly, we have about three million of that in cash, but I'll have to go. I'll have to go double check that number. Okay. Any other questions? I think the bottom line is, is that just prior, this number went up by what a million dollars since the last time. Yeah, the uh, funding funds that we'll have to get from the hospital. Okay. 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 The next, yeah, do we have the next meeting? Um, so the next meeting is on July 19th of 2017. It is uh, noted wrong on the agenda, so I do apologize for that. Would you go ahead and be here? Stacy, will you be sending out an email reminder to us this time? Yes. If we could get it like three, four weeks ahead of time, because I, I don't write things down that that far off in advance. <laughs> Life changes. Yeah. 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 Any reminders is possible. <laughs> There was a changing of the guard, so I do yeah. apologize. Some things were dropped. Oh, no worries. Fine. I will definitely make sure that you guys get the notice about a month in advance. Okay. Um, so the only other thing is I wanted to talk to uh, Jack after the meeting about the potential dates for the annual report. We got your, your feedback and incorporated that, so we just have to put, the, put together a date for us to come forward to the board. Okay. If there's nothing else, we can adjourn. Thank you.